between the time that you start acting on God's word and the time that you end up experiencing God's promise, there may be a storm in the midst of that, but you're still going to the other side because Jesus made the promise. Here's the secret. Here's the secret, folks. Whenever fear comes, whenever you're anxious, whenever you're worried, whenever you're upset, whenever you questioning, thinking that God doesn't care, you got to remember what you already have. You have to take inventory. So what did the disciples have to match the storm? Number one, they had a promise. They had a promise. Jesus said, we're going to the other side. You know what? You need to start your day with God's promise. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. You need to start your business with a promise. You need to start your family with a promise. You need to start whatever you're about to tackle with a promise. No matter what storm comes against you, you need to take inventory. And the first thing you have is a promise. God always prepares us for whatever storm is coming our way with a promise. The promise is you can do all things through Christ. The promise is that no weapon formed against you will prosper. The promise is that no evil can come near your dwelling place. There are seven thousand and promises. And one of them is the one you need today. You know, all you need is one promise for whatever storm you're going to face. Oh, and by the way, that promise is unbreakable because Jesus swore in blood to keep this promise. Don't ever face a storm without a promise. The promise will calm the storm. The second thing was they had God's presence. They had God's presence. Sometimes we forget he's with us. We sing songs like, come on down, Holy Ghost. I mean, this isn't the price is right. Come on down. He's already down. He's already in you. He's already with you. He's God for us. That's the father. He's God with us. That's the son, Emmanuel. And he's God in us. That's the Holy Spirit. You have the presence. You have a promise. You have his presence. He said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. The disciples had a promise. The disciples had God's presence. The disciples had power. Do you know that Jesus woke up when they woke him out of fear? Jesus calmed the storm. He said to the storm, peace, be still. But look, the only one that can bring peace to the storm is the one that has peace inside already. You're not trying to calm the storm so that you can have peace. You have to have the peace and know that God is with you and know that you have the promise so that you will feel the peace. And then when you speak to the storm, it listens to the one that is more powerful than it. It doesn't listen to the one that's afraid of it. It listens to the one that has peace inside. Jesus had peace inside, so he said, peace, be still. The only reason he could say peace, be still was because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth spoke. He had so much peace inside that it overflowed out of his mouth. And when he said peace, it happened. And there was a great calm. If you don't have a great calm in your life, let me tell you what will bring great calm. You have his promise. You have his presence. You have his power. Fear comes from the absence of God's presence. Fear doesn't come from a bad financial situation. Fear doesn't come from sickness or disease. Fear comes when you are separated from the presence of God. If you look, the first thing that happened to them when they were separated from the presence of God was they became afraid. What? Because God's presence delivers you from fear. David said, I walked through the valley of the shadow of death. The, the shadow of the valley of the shadow of death didn't bring fear. He said, I can walk through the valley of the shadow of death and I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. He doesn't say I will fear no evil because I'm eventually going to get out of this valley. Although it's true, he did get out of the valley and you're going to get out of your valley. But you can't. But fear doesn't leave you because you're going to get out of the valley. Fear doesn't leave you because you never have a valley. Fear leaves you when you are aware of God's presence with you. Amen. An angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terribly frightened. And the angel said to them, do not be afraid for behold. Why do not be afraid? Why? 
because I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. Don't be afraid. Why? Because I'm bringing you good news, good news, good news brings good news brings freedom from fear. Good news is the love that God has for us, brings us good news. No matter how bad it looks, it was at night. It was dark. It was a dreary time in the in the world. It was a, it was a world that was fallen. It was a world that was forsaken. It was a world that was broken. And in many cases and in many ways, our world is still broken today, but not because of what Jesus has done for us, but because so many people have not yet received what he's done for them. And then the people that have received it, they really don't see it as good news. They really don't realize, man, we have been delivered from false expectations appearing real. We've been delivered from fear. The first thing that happened to Adam and Eve when they sinned was they were afraid. The first thing Jesus comes to deliver us from is fear. Do not be afraid. Love is here. Love is here. Perfect love casts out fear. Love is here. God shows up. Love shows up. And when love shows up, fear has to run out the door. When Jesus said, let's launch into the deep, what caused Peter to take that risk? is he saw God's goodness, what caused him to be willing to risk something that was contradictory to what he had experienced. We fished all night and caught nothing, Lord. But at your word, we will go out into the deep and let down your net, let down our nets. And that's exactly what he did. He took a risk because he saw the goodness of God. He took a risk because he believed in the goodness of God. You see, God wants us to live out in the risk taking what's keeping us from giving in the offering. We don't trust God's goodness is enough to give back a, a, a harvest to our seed. We don't share our faith. Why? Because we're afraid God might not back us up. We don't pray for the sick. Why? Because we're afraid that maybe they won't recover. But Jesus said, trust me, you go lay your hands on them and they'll recover. Trust me, give and it'll be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running up. Trust me, open up your mouth and I will fill it with good things. You see, why don't people take risks? Because they're not confident in the goodness of God. I'm telling you, these are the three things that have happened in my life. By believing in the goodness of God, it's brought radical change into my life. By believing in the goodness of God, it's brought me peace and rest and confidence in God. And by believing in the goodness of God, it's brought me to the place of risk taking that I'm willing to step out and trust God will meet me right where I am. I can't tell you how much I long for you to enter this wide open, spacious life. No one's fencing you. And you know what they call that? I I got out of places like that, controlling places, controlling people, controlling preachers, try to control you, manipulate you, try to domineer you with fear and intimidate you with punishment theology uh, when there is no punishment in love because there is no fear in love. Perfect love casts out fear because fear involves punishment. You get afraid because you assume God will punish you for what you do. You know, God will never punish you again ever. He will discipline you to correct your thinking, but he will never punish you because he put all of his wrath on Jesus. Now, if you reject Jesus, then you're subject to the punishment that Jesus absorbed. If you were if you were to reject Jesus as your savior and never accept him, then you are subject to that punishment um, and that torment. But in Christ, Jesus absorbed is like a lightning rod, all of the punishment for our lives so that we don't have to live in fear that we will be punished if we make a mistake. There's mercy at the throne of God's grace and there is grace at the throne of God's grace. And you know what? Every day I live, I need a little combination of both of those. Well, I need a big combination of both of those. Every one of us has a thing whether that's the fear of talking in front of people, whether that's the fear of committing to something, whether that's the fear of uh, of of failing, the fear of of making a mistake, the fear of losing. We all we all have these fears that we have to be willing to take risks. Many of us are going to be people that even though we have that fear, we're going to step out anyway, even though you have the fear of um, trusting God step out and tithe anyway, even though even though you have the fear of sharing the gospel, step out and give a a, 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 give an invitation card to somebody, even though you have the fear of of something bad might happen, step out and walk in faith and live by confidence in God and take risks anyway, because God will meet you where you are willing to conquer your fears.